talk to me, kid. I need you to help us. Dispatch is a short psychological horror game which you can download for free. The unique storytelling immerses you deeply in the plot and just when you're defenseless, it catches you off guard. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. There will be spoilers ahead. With that said, let's begin. As a nighttime dispatch caller, the player answers calls to 911 emergencies at 3 a.m. in the morning traditionally known as the time of the devil. A voice message at the beginning of the game informs the protagonist to take it easy and not to feel guilty about an emergency call which he took, which presumably ended badly. Hey there, son. I noticed that you haven't been filling out the reports on the calls you've been doing recently. Listen. I know that you must be pretty torn up about what happened, and like I said to you before, this isn't on you. No one's blaming you. He shouldn't have gone in the way he did. He should have waited for the right people to come and... Like I said, no one's blaming you for that. Regardless, the protagonist subconsciously holds himself accountable for what happened experiencing supernatural events which correlate with the events that took place on the incident. There is even a writing on a piece of paper with an image which suddenly appears, reading your fault, insinuating that the protagonist hasn't moved on from the emergency and sees himself as the culprit. Typically, I make two videos explaining the story and the ending or endings of a video game. But as this game is remarkably short, I'll try to fit all of the information in this video, including the multiple endings. I already posted a video of the full gameplay on my second channel, which you can watch by hitting the card above or clicking on the link in the description. Does this game access your internet to find out what date it is? It's 3 a.m. in the morning in Greenwood, Ashworth County. A dispatch caller is sitting in his office and taking 911 emergency phone calls. A voice message, presumably from a team leader, tells the protagonist to take it easy and not to blame himself for the incident that happened sometime earlier. He tells him about what happened to someone specific is not his fault, indicating that a caller got hurt in a call, which we will get back to later. On the left of the dispatch caller, a report from the reports folder suddenly comes out with an image of a monster looking entity that seems to be severely burned and a short text reading your fault, which indicates that subconsciously the dispatch caller blames himself for the incident that took place on the unlucky emergency call. After a couple of non-urgent emergency calls, the dispatch caller picks up the phone to a call from a mother, who's terrified of her ex-husband breaking in, demanding to see their daughter, Sophie. Hello? Someone is trying to get into my house. It's got to be my ex-husband. He's been banging on the windows and calling out for me. He's not allowed to be here. He's trying all the doors and asking to see her. Sophie? She's our daughter. She lives with me. He gets visits. Ah! Oh no! He's broken in. Tell him to hurry. The man seems uneasy and possibly intoxicated and clearly very threatening and dangerous. The dispatch caller sends a unit out on blue light to attend the incident, which indicates an ETA or in other words, estimated time of arrival of 10 minutes. Plenty of time for the ex-husband to inflict huge damage. During the call, the dispatch caller experiences paranormal events, which do correlate with the current events happening in the house of Sophie or the caller.
upstairs. The protagonist then speaks to Sophie, the caller's daughter. Sophie seems to be very young, possibly younger than 10, as she doesn't seem to understand the gravity of the situation. Things slowly escalate and the ex-husband pushes the mother, which leads to her falling and suffering a head injury, presumably, with a lot of blood gushing out. This terrifies Sophie, which leads to the dispatch caller guiding her to hide somewhere. A plush toy then appears on the pinboard behind the dispatch caller's desk, indicative of his projected guilt of what is to happen or have already happened to Sophie. The insane father then starts a fire and runs out of the house, leaving Sophie locked in her bedroom upstairs, with her death being imminent. The emergency unit then arrives at the location, being confronted by a massive fire, with the bottom of the house entirely engulfed in flame. The emergency unit asks for fire unit, but as Sophie's death is imminent and the fire unit could take a while before arriving, the dispatch caller and the emergency unit at the site have to make the difficult choice of entering the premises and risking their own lives or wait for the fire unit, which could quite possibly lead to Sophie's death. Meanwhile, the dispatch caller's office starts shaking and banging, with a sign behind the computer monitor reading coward. Again, the dispatch caller subconscious blaming himself. There are two endings in the game with slight variation in the final dialogue. The first ending, which might be the most common ending majority of people get, is the plush toy from the penboard behind suddenly teleporting in front of the dispatch caller on his disc, while all the monitors turn off. Suddenly a charred looking monster jumps out from behind the disc, grabbing the dispatch caller by the neck. Depending on the choices of dialogue the dispatch caller made, the ending can be bad or good. If the dispatch caller doesn't think on his feet and guides Sophie to shout out for help from the bottom of her lungs, the dispatched police unit struggles to find Sophie and leaves the premises without extracting her, leaving her to burn. Talk to me, kid. I need you to help us. We can't do it. <coughs> We've got to get out of here. This makes the monster to listen carefully to the dispatch call. And when he hears that the girl dies, the monster stabs the protagonist swiftly with his arm, killing him instantly. Therefore, this current call didn't actually happen in real time. But instead, the dispatch caller was imagining it all based on a previous call. He was feeling extremely guilty for Sophie's death as he could have changed the outcome if he would only tell Sophie to shout. He experiences all the events of what happened during the call in the house very vividly and sees writings calling him a coward and guilty. He also sees a plush toy, an indication of Sophie's previous existence and her innocent childhood, which are all brought to life due to the dispatch caller's severe guilt trip an imagination. An imaginary monster then suddenly appears, the embodiment of the dispatch caller's guilt. Eating him up, the monster then stabs the dispatch caller straight in the heart, killing him instantly. Which might suggest that the dispatch caller actually dies in the real life due to heart attack, presumably. The second ending is slightly different, which can be dubbed as the good ending. The charred monster still appears and grabs the dispatch caller by the neck. But if the dispatch caller guides Sophie to shout for help, the outcome is immensely different. The monster again carefully listens to the call, hearing that the police unit actually finds Sophie and extract her out safely, saving her life. 
<laughs> Come here, kid. <clears throat> I got you. It's all right. <clears throat> We're getting out of here. This lets the monster to place the dispatch collar down and then suddenly disappears, leaving him be. Therefore, the good ending lets the dispatch collar be alive, as his guilt, the charred monster, understands that dispatch collar did all he could, which led to Sophie being safe and alive. Therefore, the protagonist's conscience is clear and he doesn't have anything to blame himself for. Although the good ending is much happier and positive, the most fitting in my opinion is the bad ending. As throughout the game, the dispatch color is hunted and tormented by supernatural events, subconsciously blaming himself for what happened to Sophie. Even the voice message in the beginning is suggestive of the dispatch color not being successful in letting Sophie live. However, a theory that could make the good ending possible as if the dispatch caller gets a second chance and miraculously goes back in time and gets to relive the events once more. Choosing differently. This lets the dispatch caller to save Sophie, having a different future. Yet another theory which is more supernatural yet possible is that the dispatch caller somehow dies after the call. It could be whether sustaining a heart attack, due to his vivid imagination seeing the charred entity or actually taking his own life. This places the protagonist in a purgatory-like place, as suggested from the supernatural events occurring and the time showing 3 a.m., a time of the devil. In this purgatory, the protagonist is doomed to suffer the tragic experiences of Sophie and the death in the monster's hand. If in the purgatory the dispatch caller saves Sophie, his conscience becomes clear and eventually forgives himself, letting him move on to a better place. Otherwise, the events keep on repeating themselves, making the protagonist suffer indefinitely. Dispatch is a free game which is available to download now. The plot of the game was surprisingly good and engaging, despite being very short. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more horror related content, stay tuned by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host star, till the next video, have a fantastic day.